Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Sarastro's Descent Painting Series. In this episode, I'm going to be painting the human prodigy Cyrus from Fantasy Flight Games Descent Legends of the Dark. And if you've not yet seen the first episode, which covers the dragon hybrid Varix, you can find a link on screen and in the video description. Here's a quick overview of how I'll be painting Cyrus. I first primed the figure in black, followed with a quick value sketch using the airbrush. However, a plain prime in white would also be fine. I'll then be providing the base colours, blocking in some initial light and shade as I go, to save time when adding the highlights. I'll also be applying some selective shade to achieve a bit of easy definition and contrast. Next I'll be painting the fiery phoenix, where I'll be keeping things pretty fast and simple, with the heavy use of some wet blending. This gives us a fairly decent tabletop standard already, which we can then follow with some optional highlights to really push the contrast and sense of light coming from the phoenix. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm starting with the skin, where I'm using a roughly equal mix of African shadow and brown leather, darkened with a touch of black. Notice I'm not bothered about avoiding the sandals. I'm now adding some additional black to give me a darker tone for the beard. Next I'm going to paint the inside of the mouth using pink flesh mixed with just a little black. I'm now using some nacar to paint the teeth, and you could use pretty much any off-white tone you like. I then went back and forth a bit trying to articulate the eyes using the nacar and the surrounding skin tone. This is pretty optional, but if you can get just a touch of off-white to suggest the eyes, it can add quite a bit of presence. And here I'm just drawing in the eyebrows with the beard tone. For the inner top, I'm using nacar mixed with a little field grey, and darkened with a touch of black. For the clothes on the lower half, I've chosen to sketch in some initial light and shade, using Thar Brown for the areas of highlight, mixed into some field grey and a little black for the shadows. I'm starting with a slightly dull mid-tone. And while that's still wet, I'm blocking in some areas of highlight using the Thar Brown. You can see from my placement that I'm using this brighter, warmer tone to give the impression of light coming from the flaming phoenix. Once that's dry, we can go in and do a little refining or solidifying of the tone as needed. For the yellow top, I'm also going to sketch in the object source lighting, this time using Sahara Yellow for the highlights, which I'm simply mixing with a little black for the shadows. I'm starting with the shadow tone. Thank you. 
and I'm now using pure Sahara yellow for the areas I imagine would be lit by the light of the flames. This can be pretty rough and sketchy, as we can do as much or as little refining later on as we like. I'm once again adding a second layer where necessary to ensure I've got a nice solid tone. With the main areas of clothing complete, I'm now going to paint the staff using walnut. I'm also using this for the small bit of strap we can see holding the wand. And here I've noticed that I missed a piece of the yellow top. I'm now going to lighten the walnut with some Thar Brown and a little Iroko, and I'm using this for the lighter sections of the glove as well as the sandals. As usual, I like to tidy up as I go. For the dark sections of the glove, I'm mixing a little black into some brown leather. This will also do nicely for the wand. Next I'm going to paint the sash using Indian Shadow. And for the golden details, I'm using Sahara Yellow mixed with some Gobi Brown. Finally I'm going to paint the base where I'm using Arden Green for the foliage and I'll be freely mixing some graphite and Thar Brown for the stony ground. I'm now using the graphite to paint the ground but we'll be shifting towards Thar Brown near the front of the base. Next I'm going to shade the base down using a 2 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil, thinned with a little medium.
This can also be used for all of the brown and gold parts of the outfit, including the staff. This just helps darken down the recesses, giving some depth and definition. I've also chosen to thin down some Griff Charger Grey with an equal amount of contrast medium, which I'm using to bring some depth to the shadows of the clothing, mainly for the areas that aren't receiving light from the flaming phoenix. This creates a cooler shadow tone which will contrast nicely against the warm highlights I'll be adding in a while. Finally, I'm using some pure black to add some black lining to help separate the main areas of the miniature. Let's now paint the phoenix. Before adding any colour, I'm going to first use some pure white to tidy up any areas I've hit with the preceding base colours. I'm then creating a fiery gradient using the following tones, which I'm going to loosely wet blend onto the phoenix, and you could really use whatever red, orange and yellows you like for this. I want the brightest area to be at the front of the phoenix, with the trailing flames getting gradually more orange than red. Within this broad gradient, you can see that I'm still creating some irregular variations as I go. Here's how things look once dry, and you could of course stop here if you like. I've chosen to add a few bright spots in some of the recesses, so I'm first applying a little white using a white ink, but you could use whatever white paint you like. I'm then painting over this with a mix of Vallejo's fluorescent yellow and red tones. Elsewhere I'm just strengthening the tone where the coverage looks a little thin. I might do some further refining here later on, but with the phoenix more or less complete, I'm now going to provide Cyrus with some highlights. Starting with the yellow top, I'm going to be boosting the Sahara yellow with the addition of some Sol yellow and some Tenera yellow, focusing mainly on the areas that are closest to the Phoenix. I'm 
I might also do some refining of the mid-tones along the way. I'm also adding some of these fiery tones to the base colours of the other pieces of clothing, and this might include a little of the fluorescent red. I'm now going to highlight the skin, where I'll be starting with a mix of African shadow and brown leather, before lightening the tone with some orange leather and some golden skin. I'm now highlighting up to a mid-tone of orange leather, This is now pure orange leather. For the brighter highlights I'm adding some golden skin, along with some of the fiery tones where I'd like the suggestion of some object source lighting. I'm also using some of the mid-tones to highlight the facial hair. Next I'm highlighting the various brown elements by once again mixing in varying amounts of the Sol and Tanara yellow, along with a little fluorescent red. How far we decide to push the highlights might depend on the material. A polished staff or leather glove might be quite reflective compared to a soft robe so we might apply some sharper, more extreme highlights.
I'm now going to highlight the gold details by working from the base tone to pure Sahara yellow, before adding some Tenera yellow and some white sands. There's not much room to work here, so we can be fairly sketchy and impressionistic, provided we don't hold back on how bright we push the glinting highlights. Here I'm adding the white sands for the brightest glints. Next I'm using some Indian shadow to pick out the small pink details on the glove and the sash. There's also a pink trim on the yellow top, although this is somewhat fiddly, so it might be something you'd rather skip. I'm now going to highlight all of the pink elements with the addition of some fuchsia and then some sol and tenera yellow. Next I'm giving a boost to the highlights on the base, once again adding some of the fiery tones to brighten things up. As usual, I like to paint the rim of the base in black. And here I've just noticed the golden neck piece on the phoenix, which I'm now painting in the same way I did the other golden details. I'm now just adding a few final tweaks and refinements, which include some small adjustments to the flames and some of the object source lighting. And this completes Cyrus. Thank you for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. As usual, you can find a full product list in the video description, along with all of the places I can be reached on social media. My very special thanks go to my amazing patrons for funding these videos. If you'd like to help support my work, you can find out more by hitting the Patreon link.
Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Descent Legends of the Dark. Happy painting!